once ordinary creatures, but mutated by some unnatural cause. These two giant apes are truly forces of nature. But what happens when the tsunami meets the earthquake? Kongar, the sonic ape, and George, the ape king of Rampage. I'm one fish mob, and it's my job to see who would win in a fight. Not so long ago, our world was under attack by extraterrestrial invaders. So the governments of the world decided to build a worldwide weapon that destroy all of the alien ships. And wouldn't you know it, it actually worked. However, this plan may have been short-sighted, as seeing how when the ships crashed, their radiation, otherworldly fuel, spilled out onto our planet which wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't so powerful and mutagenic. Anything exposed to this contamination either awoke from a great slumber, reactivated, turned into a living creature, or more commonly, transformed into a giant monster. Like this cute little guy. Originally a normal happy-go-lucky space chimp, his shuttle was unfortunately struck by an alien ship crashing into Earth's atmosphere causing him to be launched into the cold vacuum of space. However, this would not be the day the chimp died. As he was sent back into Earth's atmosphere, the radiation of the ship transformed him, and from this day on, he would no longer be a mere lab animal, but a beast that would wage war on anyone and anything in his path. And his name was Kongar. But the size increase wasn't all he got. Kongar can lift at least 38 tons given his proportions, and is slightly faster than a speeding car. Despite his large size, Kongar is able to jump on top of small buildings and can climb up taller buildings at fast speeds, though he isn't that great at maneuvering or fighting on them. Kongar is also smart enough to use debris or smaller structures as clubs, bats, spears, and even freaking bombs. And when he fights hand to hand, he fights using the gorilla style and can go toe to toe with any kind of monster his size. But Kongar doesn't just solely rely on brute strength. During his mutation, his own voice became a weapon. He can shoot sonic blasts from his mouth like bullets or he can let out a huge sonic roar that can level buildings and send monsters his size flying across the map. Or if he's overcrowded, he can use a sonic blast to create a close range shock wave. Kongar is certainly no pushover. He survived atmospheric re-entry without burning up. Is considered one of the strongest monsters in the game. Can send several ton monsters flying through the air by punching them, can casually jump on top of tall buildings and is smart enough to know when to partner with other monsters such as Praetor. However, Kongar is far from perfect. Despite being very durable, he can be killed with enough brute force, such as a skyscraper falling on him. He lacks many long-range attacks, and his only long-range attack is one of his weakest in his arsenal, and all attacks take up stamina, with attacks like the Sonic Roar using the most. However, this ape is far from anything to mess with. Take him off, and you will get destroyed. Scum Labs if that name doesn't sound appetizing, I don't know what else would be. Scum Labs in Universe is a transnational corporation which mainly focuses on scientific research, usually for common goods and medicine. However, most of the time, incidents occur. These incidents usually involve personnel or civilians coming into contact with radioactive substances explosions, or consumption of impure victuals made by scum labs, causing them to mutate into giant monsters that wreak havoc upon the entire world, gorging on citizens and smashing high-rise cities and capitals. And among these mutations was George. While each version may differ, 
Each are rather similar. He was an ordinary man who was exposed to something Scum Labs made, which transformed him into a giant man-eating super ape with a desire to rampage. But George wouldn't be able to do this without the powers or ability to do so. George can climb up and jump across tall buildings, is slightly faster than a speeding car, and can lift 19 tons given his proportions. George also knows that some things he finds in the smashed buildings will benefit him, so George will eat whatever he finds in the buildings he destroys, and when he attacks buildings, he prefers going at them gorilla style. With his fists, he can smash buildings down easily, with the strongest leveling the entire buildings almost instantly, and he can devour people in a single bite. George has certainly proven to be anything less than harmless. He has destroyed multiple buildings, taken down offensive military forces, is an expert climber, ate countless amounts of people, is smart enough to work with other monsters, and has survived falling from tall buildings multiple times. However, George is anything but flawless. With enough brute force, George can be taken down, and if he sustains enough damage or he eats shells, toasters, and cigarettes, he will revert back to his human form. However, even if George does go down, he'll have already taken several city blocks and lives down with him. Alright, the combatants are set. This battle will have no prep time, no outside help, or home field advantage. Let the battle begin. Fight! Wow, and I thought Kong's death was unpleasant. Aside from that, George certainly held the agility and possibly the intelligence edge, but Kongar simply outclassed him in every other category. Kongar was not only bigger, but he was also stronger. Being able to lift 38 tons is far greater than George's 19 ton limit. And while George may be reverted back to human form by things like simple lasers, Kongar has survived city leveling explosions, attacks that can send them flying, and even atmospheric re-entry. Not to mention, Kongar has been in enough battles to know how to fight, while George has never fought another monster like himself. As well, even though George can destroy entire buildings with multiple punches, Kongar's sonic roar can do the exact same thing in one shot. And even though George may be more agile, Kongar's jumping abilities cancels that out, being able to easily jump to the top of buildings without climbing, unlike George. In the end, George only had two options that could give him the win. Do the classic rampage strategy and topple a skyscraper on top of Kongar, or wear out Kongar's stamina. However, there's a problem with both of these strategies. First off, Kongar is unlikely to stay in one place while George is pounding away at a random building, and it takes a long time for George to do any real destruction, giving Kongar more than enough time to move or slam George off of it. And secondly, it's unlikely George would be able to last long enough for his Kongar stamina to drain, considering of how outmatched he is. In the end, it looks like Kongar truly went on a rampage, in this war between monsters, the winner is Kongar.
Lots of hurt. Hold the onions. I've yet to meet one that can outsmart a bullet. Give us some more.